best life. I'm living my best life. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Long time no talk. I know it's been forever since I uploaded a video, but I ain't dead. I'm still here. I'm still rocking. So. Today's video is a little bit different than a lot of the other videos that I've uploaded on this channel, but I'm really excited because this is something that I am really passionate about. These are things that I talk about with my friends, with my family, with just, just people in general. Like, I just love to talk about these things. So, this type of video is going to be more kind of like I'm talking to my sister or like I'm talking to my girls. So how to boss up let's just get into it so a lot of the tips and the tricks and the things that I'm going to share with you are things that I have either a picked up from reading books from watching motivational speakers from just conversing with friends and family and just things that I've implemented myself in becoming an entrepreneur and becoming my own boss so yeah let's get into it so the first thing that i would say that i have found that's super important in becoming a boss and trying to become an entrepreneur is changing your mindset you really have to completely reprogram the way that you think because obviously the old way the old habits and the old way of thinking it doesn't work so I'll give you guys an example on what I mean when I say changing your mindset and changing the way that you think. If you are one of those people who's always stressed about money, you're always saying that you're broke, you're always, you know, worried about how you're going to pay this and how you're going to get that and how you're going to afford to do this, then you are putting out the energy that you don't have enough money. You are aligning with the frequency that you are lacking. So that's going to keep happening to you. You are going to keep on lacking and not having enough money because that that's the energy that you're putting out so you have to kind of change the way that you think and you know I'm not saying that if if you can't afford a Benz go get a Benz that's not what I'm saying at all but you kind of have to align your actions your thoughts and your words with what you want so if you do want a Benz you're not constantly going to stress and be like, oh, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to do that? You have to admit the frequency that you're abundant and that you have those things and they will come to you. So let me just get into the next part so it makes a little bit makes a little bit more sense. Being familiar with the law of attraction and, you know, the laws of the universe. But the law of attraction, I think, right now is the most important in this subject. Um, and if you're not familiar with what the law of attraction is, you can, Netflix has a really good documentary, it's called The Secret, and they also have a book which really dives deep into the law of attraction, how it works, how you can use it. Um, I would highly recommend that you check that out so you can get a little bit more information on it. But just some basic understanding of the law of attraction. The law of attraction basically states that whatever energy, whatever frequency you align to and you put out into the universe, you are going to get back. So with the example that I gave with money, like I said, if you're constantly putting that energy out that you're lacking, that you don't have enough, then that's what you will receive. Because the universe, God, the creator loves us so much that whatever we ask for, we will receive, whether it's good, whether it's bad. And a lot of us do these things subconsciously. Like we don't realize that we are asking and that we are attracting these things to us. It's just a lot of the mental programming that's been instilled to us instilled into us since we were children pretty much i would highly recommend that you get familiar with the law of attraction because if you want to become a boss if you want your mindset to go from you know working for somebody to working for yourself having other people working for you you really have to watch what you say what you're thinking what you're doing because those things are bruh, those things are so important. We, we are so powerful. Us human beings are so powerful. If we only knew how powerful we were, whew, whew. let me just say, the law of attraction basically creates and shapes our reality in our day-to-day -day life. We don't even realize it, but our life that we are currently living we created that like 
the life that I'm currently living, I'm in LA, I'm a YouTuber, all these things, I created these things. I, a couple years ago, I thought them in my head. I, it all starts with a thought. Carry it out with your words and your actions and any, anything you want in life, you will get. And I promise you that. I promise you that. Anything, anything, because we are powerful beings, bruh. We are so powerful, and we have the potential and the ability to get anything we want. Anything we want. Another thing that I want to mention is that you need to know your worth. So if you, okay, let me give an example. Say you're working at, I don't know, Starbucks, and you're making $10, $12 an hour, right? You got to know that you are worth more than that because let's think about it. Starbucks, a huge corporation, billions and billions of dollars, right? They can obviously afford to pay their employees more. But if you think about it, you're working for these people making $12 an hour. You're making them billions. They're getting billions off the little 12 that you're working for. So before, before I started doing YouTube videos, I was working at a, cons a casino in Las Vegas. I was working at the Mandalay Bay in the finance department. And I would work anywhere from 8 to 14 hours every single day. It was a very tedious and time-consuming job. Time-consuming job. So when I would get home, I would be exhausted. I would not have any time or energy to focus on the things that I want to do. And let me just tell you, a 9 to 5 job is a trap. If you're trying to be a business man or woman, you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're trying to be your own boss, a 9 to 5 is a trap. And they want you to get comfortable because they want, they literally want to work you to the bone to the point to where when you get home, you're too tired to focus on your goals. You're too tired to focus and work towards the things that you want. You, you go to sleep, you recharge, you get up, reset, go work for them the next day, and do it again and again and again until you're so tired and old and your life has passed you by and you're like, oh shit, that's not okay. So as much, like I know, like sometimes we have to work. We do, we have to work. We don't all have the privilege of just quitting our nine to five job and pursuing our dreams. But what I'm telling you is you cannot get comfortable in that nine to five job you cannot i understand that you know you work you get home you're tired some people are single parents some people have kids to feed to put to sleep to help with homework but all i'm saying is if you want to be a boss and you want to be an entrepreneur you're going to prioritize your time and you're going to you know you're going to make it happen you're going to figure out a way to make it work because your nine to five job should only be there to finance your goals and to finance your dreams and to finance what you really are trying to do. You feel me? So don't get comfortable. Why you could y'all you could do anything and be anything and blossom into anything you want to be. So don't choose to be comfortable. Another thing is establishing a good morning routine. Now this is key. This is something, I probably should have said this first, because I think this is probably one of the most important things, is establishing a routine that you can stick to in the morning. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a full-blown, you got to wake up an hour early to do these things. It doesn't even have to be that. It could simply be just you waking up in the morning and being more mindful of the things that you're doing. Not getting on your phone the first thing you do in the morning, because let me tell you, that is so toxic. Getting on your, waking up, rolling over, getting on your phone and looking at what Sally and Susie did over the weekend and the, the first thing in the morning, that is so toxic. Just don't do it. Establish a healthy morning routine. Take time out for yourself. Reset. Take a deep breath. See how you're feeling. Get your thoughts together. Don't rush. Your day will continue and go how it starts. So if you start off stressed, and you're rushing, and you're irritated, that's nine times out of ten, that's how the rest of your day is going to be. So we don't want to do that. We want to get off to a good, healthy start in the morning so that that can trickle down to the rest of the day, and you can have a good, healthy day. A lot of the greats, if you look at, you know, Oprah, Will Smith, any influential person will tell you that they have a healthy morning routine. 
Um, I believe Will Smith said the first thing he does in the morning is reads and runs. Um, you can literally read one chapter, read 10 minutes while you're eating your breakfast, or you know, do some squats while you're brushing your teeth in the morning. Get your, get your heart rate going. Just little simple things like that. So establishing new habits and sacrificing. You're going to want to change what you're watching, what you're consuming. You're going to want to change the type of music that you're listening to, the amount of time that you are on social media. You know, we've always been there, like, you know, when you're doing your homework or something and then you go on your phone just for a second, you know, you're just trying to go see something, but then you end up being on there for an hour, two hours later, and then you look down and you're like, oh crap, huh, forgot all about my homework. That's a perfect example. Our phones, our tablets, our computers, you know, they all serve good purposes and they are very beneficial. However, they can easily become extremely toxic. They can become an issue very fast. Just watch out for that. And one tip of advice that I would like to give is to produce more than you consume. So if you are trying to start your own business, you shouldn't be on Instagram all day looking at you know the shade room you should be figuring out how you're going to start your business so this next one is actually it's really hard and i know a lot of people probably aren't going to want to hear it but you have to change the company you keep and you, you have to elevate your circle you become like the people that you are around whether you realize it or not that's just facts at the end of the day if you are surrounded by people who you wouldn't want to trade places with then I think it's time to reevaluate. You know, you have to elevate your circle. If you hang around bosses and entrepreneurs, over time you will become a boss or an entrepreneur. If your friends have a nine to five mindset and that's not what you're on, you're not trying to be a nine to five worker your whole life, then you can't surround yourself with them. I'm not saying completely cut them off, but I'm just saying, you know, just be mindful of who you are around. A lot of people, when you, friends, family, whatever, when you share your dreams with them and you share your goals with them and they're a little out of the box sometimes, people can be very discouraging. And, you know, it's not always, it's not coming from a place of malice. I feel like a lot of the times it's coming from people who are just trying to have your back and have your best interest. But, they don't understand and they're not in a position that you want to be in so you can't take advice from them you can't listen to them and honestly i really wouldn't even share goals with them because if it can get discouraging and that's the last thing you need if you're trying to go out and pursue your dream and do the things you want to do and you have you know mike in your ear discouraging you it will have an effect on the things that you do. Okay, so this next one I'm pretty passionate about because, you know, you guys all know that I'm plant-based. So, honestly, health plays a big factor in success, creativity, all that, believe it or not. So, let me just break it down to you. If you are constantly eating fried food, you know, fast food, just like bad food, you're putting that in your body, that, you are what you eat, the saying you are what you eat is so true, like that saying is real, real deal. Food gives your body information and it tells your body what to do. So if you're eating junk and crap and fried greasy nasty food all the time, your body's going to be crap. That's just what it is, your body's going to be crap. If you're putting food into your body that's healthy, that's nourishing, then your body will flourish, your body will be nourished. I noticed when I went vegetarian last year that when I eliminated meat, I the way that I was thinking completely changed. Like, my thoughts cleared up because I didn't have all those toxins and all those chemicals and all, you know, that nastiness in my body. So my body was able to clear up. My head, my thoughts were able to clear up and elevate and I started getting thoughts and, and ideas and things that I never had before. Thinking about things that I never thought about before. So honestly, like changing the way you eat will completely elevate the way that you think. I, I've experienced that. And I'm not here to, you know, convert everyone to go vegan or vegetarian, although that would be great. I'm just saying, you know, be mindful of what you're putting in your body because, y'all, 
I'm just saying, just do a little bit of research. This is something that I'm currently trying to work on. Basically trying to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, honestly, someone told me you'll never be comfortable being uncomfortable, but I feel like if you can just get yourself to be in that feeling of being uncomfortable and get you know, familiar with it, it becomes easier because nothing good comes from your comfort zone. Like, nothing. You have to put yourself out there. You have to do things that you maybe necessarily don't want to do, but you got to know that they'll pay off. A book that kind of helped me is the five second rule. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just, it's giving yourself five seconds to make a decision. So, um, when I find that I'm in situations where I'm super uncomfortable, before I give myself time to analyze it and think about it and judge it, I take a deep breath, I count down from five, and I just go for it. I just, you just gotta do it, and it helps. You gotta walk it how you talk it. You've got to align your words, your thoughts, and your actions with the things that you want. Sometimes it'll feel like, oh, like, you know, I'm telling myself that I'm I'm, I'm confident and I'm, I'm successful and I'm outgoing, but I'm really, you don't feel like you're really those things. Sometimes it's going to feel like you're lying to yourself at first, but just, you have to align. If that's what you want, you have to speak it, act it, feel it into existence. Literally, you have to feel the feeling of how you'll feel once you're where you want to be and do the things that you would do once you get to where you want to be. You have to act and live as though you're already where you want to be for it to really truly happen. And one last thing that I want to say is that it's not all, the end result is great you know that's what we're working for that's what we want we're all looking for the end result but you cannot focus on the end result as great as it is you need to focus on the journey because that is the best part that's where all the growth and the learning happens if you just walk outside and you become successful and you become rich nothing it doesn't mean anything there's no meaning behind it there's no story behind it we all have to have a story so you know, don't get so caught up in the end. Just have fun along the journey. That's the, the journey is the best part. And don't, do not compare yourself to other people, what's going on in their life and what they're doing in their journey and, you know, their whole mix. Do not compare yourself. Don't concern yourself. Let me just tell you, Instagram is fake. Instagram is fake. It's not real. Surprise. I know a lot of us probably already know that, but it's fake, 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 fake. So you cannot compare yourself and your journey to someone else because uh, they're showing you their heart, their highlights. They ain't showing you when they was grinding and working and shooting in the gym. You feel me? They ain't showing you that part. They're showing you the end result. So you can't look at their end result while you're in the middle of your journey and get discouraged and compare yourself to them. So those are some of the tips that I wanted to share with you guys, some things that have helped me that I do constantly and, you know, all that good stuff. So I honestly, I plan on making a lot of videos like this because these type of videos really get, just this subject, talking about stuff like this gets me so fired up and it gets me so... I don't know, I just, I love it. I love motivating people and I love, I really want to show people their true power because like I said, y'all, we are, s <sighs> we're powerful beyond recognition. We don't even know. We don't even know. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all. I can do anything.